In this video, we'll take a look at comma chat authentication inside of JavaScript. This will include how to create a user and making sure that they're properly logging into the system. We will use a combination of a auth key as well as an auth token to be able to do this. Let's just jump straight into it. We'll begin on the comma chat website. We'll head over to developers and then to documentation. Here, we're going to get a number of different types of documentation, but we're just going to head over to SDKs and select the JavaScript documentation for web. Here, we've already completed the setup in the previous video. This time, we're moving on to authentication. For the authentication section, we're going to do a couple of tasks. The first will be to create a user. After we've completed that, we're going to do a login with an auth key, and then we're also going to do a login with a token. We'll finally finish up on creating a logout. Authentication inside of Comet Chat is essentially allowing users to connect to it and identifying who they are. There are a number of sample users that you can normally use if you're building a new app, such as Superhero 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But the recommended practice is to create your own users. You can do this by logging into the dashboard or even using the API. In this example, we're going to open up the comma chat dashboard in order to do this. Let's open it up here. I've already logged in, but if you haven't, you'll need to log in and create your first new app. In here, you can select the application and you're going to get a dashboard with a menu on the left hand side here with a lot of other options. What we're going to do is select the user option just here on the left hand side. Here you can see those superhero 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 accounts. But on top of that, we're going to select to add a brand new account. So let's select add user. Here I'm just going to put myself. So I'll select the name as Adrian. The UID is the unique identifier. This can be a number of things, but for the time being, I'm going to select Adrian. In the future, you might want to have this as a hash. The avatar and the link as well as the metadata, I'll keep empty for the time being. Let's select to add the user. Now it's here in our list and we can start using it. So you'll remember in the past setup video, we created an initializer for Comet Chat. This essentially means that Comet Chat is up and running. In this video, however, we're going to be looking at authentication. Specifically, we're going to log in a user using the login method. The login method is something that you just want to use once. You don't want to log people in every single time because once they're logged in, they're already authenticated. If you do want to check what kind of user is logged in, you can simply call the comma chat get logged in user method. And this will check if there are any existing sessions inside of this SDK instance. This will allow you to get the details of the login user as well. Otherwise, if they're not logged in, it'll just return a null, which indicates that there is no session present currently and the user will need to be logged in. Here, you can find the previous code we created for the setup of comma chat. Down here, we've initialized the application. So it's ready for us to apply some session information, such as the login. The very first thing that you want to do is check whether or not a user is already logged in. So let's start with that. We'll call a command here called comma chat get user logged in. Then we'll create a function to see if that user returns with an object. And if there is no user object, then we can, for example, perform a login request. We'll take a look at all of this in a moment, but let's actually have a look at the types of variables that we'll need in order to perform this action. The very first is a UID. This can be stored inside of your database. In my case, I created one previously and it was just called Adrian to keep things nice and simple. We can actually use some of the example super users we had previously, but for the time being, that should be fine. The next thing we'll need is an auth key. For this, you'll be able to get this inside of your dashboard. So let's actually head over to the comma chat dashboard here for quick start and we'll head over to the auth key. We're going to select to copy this and I'm going to paste this here below. We'll be able to use these two values to do a login request. So let's jump back into our section here for comma chat to get the logged in user. If, for example, there is null for the user, it returns empty. We can do this if script here and we can pass in this command called comma chat dot login UID auth key then. I'm going to fill this out and explain what's happening exactly here. Right now we're performing a login request. We're passing in the UID or the user ID and we're passing in the authentication key for this application. 
If we get a return for the user, we're completing the login successfully. But if we get a null again for the user, we've failed the login. Maybe there's an issue with the auth key or the UID. I always like to add additional notes here about what's actually happening. So in this case, I'm going to pass in user is not logged in. In this section here, I'm going to pass in that the user has logged in successfully. And over here, I'm going to pass in that the user has failed the login. This completes more or less a session where there is no user logged in just yet. But in some instances, a user might have already logged in. In those cases, we want to pass an else script in because we only want to perform this if the user has already logged in. Here, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'm just going to pass in that the user has already logged in and then I'm going to console out the user. Let's test all of this out. Now that we have all of this code complete, we can head to our index.html that we created previously. Here, we're pulling in the comma chat library for the JavaScript SDK, and then we're calling our index.js file. This will call this file here, which should initialize and perform a login. We are going to test this out by running up a live server, which is just a plugin inside of VS Code. Let's do this now. Here, I've got my hello world. What I'm going to do is open up the console and see what's happening. What we're getting is a initialization successful. Here we have a login success, which has popped up, which means that comma chat has actually worked. Then we also have this outline of a user object that we've passed through because we've completed a successful login. Let's do one more page refresh. This time we're not already performing a login because we're already logged in. So instead the console message here is already logged in and then we have the outline of the user object here. Now this is just a simple authentication procedure. This is something you would use inside of development and currently there is no additional security applied to that and you would have to apply that yourself. Also be aware that we are using the auth key but just make sure you never use the REST API key because this could be maliciously used if users get access to it. For this next part, we'll be taking a look at creating a login using an authentication token, which is a much more secure way to do so. We can do this usually by generating one through the API. The three steps that you would normally perform are one, you would create the user through the API on the back end. Next, you would create an authentication token for that user on the back end. And then you would use that authentication token to perform the login on the front end. We'll take a look at how to do this through the dashboard in this case, since we don't have a backend server up and running just yet. In order to get an authentication token, we're going to head over to the user section. We're going to select the user, which in this case is the one that I created called Adrian, and we're going to select two authentication tokens. Here we can generate a new authentication token, which we've just created over here. If you want to know how to do this on the back end, you would head over to the actual API's configuration and head over to auth tokens. Here you have an example of how to perform an API request to generate the same sort of thing. There is another option, which is the actual API generated content creator that you can utilize and test out yourself. Here you can place in all the things that you would normally do on your backend server, and you can perform an example to see what that would look like. Here I'm going to pass in a regular example for a superhero one, and here it passes back the auth token, which we could use then on the front end server. Moving back to our example here, I'm going to copy this auth key that I created for the Adrian token. We can copy and save this, and we're going to jump back into our file here in JS, and we're going to select this option right over here. We're going to then have a look at updating this code that we previously had and changing it a little bit. In this case, I'm going to leave most of it, but this section here where we created a brand new login, we're going to comment out. Instead, we're going to create a new type of login. So let's pass in comma chat login. And instead of doing a UID and an auth key, what we're going to do instead is we're going to select to use a simple auth token and pass it in as a variable just like this. I'm also going to create this variable just over here called an auth token and pass this in, which we just created. This auth token is now ready to use. And for the most part, the rest of the configuration here is exactly the same. So I'm going to uncomment this code and we'll be able to test this out in just a second because there is one final thing that we haven't looked at, which is actually logging the user out. This is what we'll need to do because we're currently in a logged in session. So it's going to remember that 
to perform a logout. We simply need to run the method logout and then check to make sure that it is successful. This is a method that you would only use if the user is logged in. So I'm going to perform it just over here. After we've checked that the user is in fact logged in, I'm going to say let's log them out. In order to log them out, we're going to call comma chat logout. Then we're going to check that the function has completed. Then we're going to console out logout is successful. If, for example, we run into any errors, we're also going to console log out the error that occurred. I think that pretty much sums it up. So I'm happy to uncomment this code and test it out in production. Let's head over to our website over here and open up the console and hit refresh. It seems that we are missing one comma here. So I'm going to pass that in over here, I believe. And that should clean that up. Let's refresh one more time. And we can see that now we're performing a successful login. We'll hit refresh now. Now that we've performed a successful login and we are already logged in, we perform a logout request. If we refresh one more time, we're performing another login. Each one of these logins are now using an auth token instead of an auth key, which is a more secure way. And normally you would pass in this auth token through your backend server. We wouldn't normally log them out and log them in continuously, but this is just an example to see what that process looks like. I hope this gives you a better understanding of authentication. In the next video, we'll start looking at sending messages. If you're looking for that video, it's just going to be up here. Great.